Last week, I showed off a terrain editor. Now, compared to Unity and Unreal, this isn't anything amazing, but for Construct where we don't have many 3D tools, this isn't quite groundbreaking. Now, the concept was really, really simple, and at the end of the video, that was as far as I was going to leave it. However, I did get an email from someone called Caleb right after. Now, Caleb is not new to the channel by any means. I first met Caleb when he showed off a 3D demo, showing lots of interesting features, including a laser, rain, and more importantly, these little ghosts that were created using meshes, which that's been in my mind for a long time of, could I do something with this? It's not till recently that I came up with the idea of, why don't we apply this to mountains? And then the terrain generator was born. However, I made two bold claims in that video. One, you can't get collision to work, and two, you can't really control the color. So at this point, Caleb replied with, hold my beer. Well, we replied with this message, but mine's more dramatic, so we'll go with mine. A couple of days later, he sent me an email, and this is what he showed me. Working collision and a shader inside of Construct using the canvas. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about how his code works, because I don't really understand it. This is literally a screenshot that I found in his code files. However, it was really, really promising to see that my little demo can go much, much further. And not long after he showed me that, the cogs in my brain was turning and I thought, what can we do next? First thing I wanted to do was actually turn this into a free roam game, something that we could walk around. So the first thing I needed to do was actually have a map that generated for me. Now my plan for this was to use an array and hold the different values of the different heights of the mountains. Now I could manually put this data in, but that would take a long time and it wouldn't look very dynamic. So I decided to make a tool to do this for me. And the way this works is I had an array that stored all the Z axis of every single point in the mesh. I would then generate a random number between one and a thousand for each of these. Now, if I just ran this, I'd end up with a big spiky mess. So what I then did is loop through the array a number of times again. And for each number, I would look at what other numbers were around it to then calculate an average that I could then randomize. This meant I could start forming smoother hills and smoother transitions between two points. Once I made that, I was able to export that as a JSON file and then upload that to a new tool. And this is what this new tool looks like. You notice I'm able to walk around and why it's a little bit janky in places, it feels like I'm walking on that terrain. And the way this was achieved is by getting the point that was closest to the player and set in the player's position to that point. I also used the tween behavior to smoothly move me to that point. This sadly didn't work very well on sharp hills, but worked for smaller terrain, which was really, really cool. I also found out that when you set a point, you can also apply a color based on the coordinate. Now, I still don't understand the system very, very well, but I just put one to 10, and by messing around with the colors and creating this sort of striped pattern, I was able to create stuff like beaches and rocks and grass which just added a lot more depth to the level as well. Once I did this, instead of posting a video about it, I thought, I'm going to send this to Caleb and see what he thinks of it. It took less than 12 hours for Caleb to reply with something much better. This is what he made. The collision was much smoother. Instead of just calculating the nearest position, it used weight. So the positions you were closer to took more into the average than the ones you were further away from. There was fog, there was draw distance. He had the shaders on top. This really shows the peak of where we are at the moment with construct free terrain generation. And that's currently where our story ends. My demo that I showed off will be available to download and Kelo has been kind enough to put his demo on the arcade page which I'll also put a link there to try out as well. I also recommend trying some of Caleb's other projects as they're all fantastic and amazing. But that is it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.